Well, hi again, and thanks for joining me. You might recall from this channel ooh, a year or two ago, I did a, a video on an N-fed uh, half wave as a half square. So this particular uh, shape of the antenna, uh, if we're using 20 meters of wire, for example, 66 feet, we'd have uh, two five meter vertical parts to it and then a horizontal part going across for about 10 meters. So I had a go at actually doing this portable the other night. Don't forget with NVET half waves, because we're feeding it at the bottom corner rather than the top corner, so we're feeding it at the bottom of one of the, uh, the vertical parts, we, we uh, do so at a, at a point where the uh, 49 to 1 or 56 to 1 will give us a fairly decent match to 50 ohms because that's a very high impedance point. So with this length of wire, we'll be able to get 40, 20, 15 and 10 on each harmonic. So um, let me show you then how we deployed it. And then what we're going to do then is look at each band in turn. So we'll uh, see what it did, say on 40 meters to start with, look at some very brief QSOs and then have a look at why the antenna performed like it did and look at the logbook. And then we'll have a go then at 20, 15 and 10. OK, over then to last week. Greetings and hello from a very warm England today. Beautiful weather early in May. Now then. And almost rhymed. Let me show you the setup. So we're using the Mad Dog Mutt 56 to 1 transformer. We've got about 5 metres of wire. That's the compensation coil going to the top of the 6 metre fibreglass pole. So 5 metres of wire, quarter wave on 20. I'd say going across there to the other pole. Again, that's 6 metres high and it comes down. The other five meters comes down. So the gap between the two poles, the horizontal space, there's the end of the wire there. The horizontal space is about uh, 10 meters. All right, so from there across to there is 10 meters. In terms of the feed line, we're feeding it with uh, some initial run of about seven meters, 20 odd feet of Hyperflex 10. And that's running along here, be too dizzy. Barrel connected to another seven meters of RG58 into the mobile stroke portable shack. I got up from my nap, Tim, to come and say hello, so have fun from G5STU. Five and nine plus 10 dB, I think this is the strongest I've ever heard you, mate. It's Mike Zero Tango Foxtrot Yankee. You're five and nine. Control four India Yankee Tango. Lovely to work with you. I've uh, I've watched your videos for a number of years. And Mike Zero Golf Quebec Charlie. About plus fifteen to plus twenty. Golf four Bravo Fox Sierra returning. You've done very good. Busy YouTube videos. On... Yeah. Good afternoon. Tim. Yeah. Five nine into uh, South Leicester this afternoon. Yeah. Lovely Tim. You're five and nine plus ten. Your report is five and nine. What your report is out five and nine Lord. Mike 7 Alpha Uniform Charlie. Uh, yeah, you're 5 9. It's always a pleasure to watch your YouTube stuff. And it's uh, a great pleasure to talk to you for the first time. You're sounding good. Also 59 plus up into Orkney Island. 2 Echo Zero Uniform Tango Bravo. Yeah, many thanks there, Tim. You're a 5 9 plus for me. I've gone through uh, the 40 metre band and uh, looking at the band scope, and yours is exceptional signal. You're 5 and 9 plus 20. So as you can see, there are plenty of contacts on 40 metres. I was pretty loud uh, throughout the UK. Worked 38 stations. I was on 40 metres for about an hour or so. So a nice steady trickle of contacts and uh, really enjoyed myself. You, you heard a couple, of, a couple of people saying that uh, it was the loudest that heard me on 40 metres. That, that was really gratifying. And all, of course, done with just about 33 feet. That's 10 metres of horizontal space, which is another really big bonus. By the way, you saw the SWR there, about two and a half to one, 2.3, 2.5 to one. Now, one or two of you might recoil in horror at the thought of an SWR, which isn't quite where you want it to be. Well, don't worry. I mean, first of all, I had a radio that had a built-in tuner. That was a 7300. Um, but if you had another radio that had a manual tuner or a, an automatic tuner right by it, do the same job. Now, on 40 metres, 7 megahertz, uh, the frequency is so low that um, even with a moderate SWR on the feed line, with a moderate run of coax like I had, uh, it would it doesn't affect you at all. So effectively, I reckon I probably had a feed point SWR of somewhere close to three to one, and with the with the coax run I had, with the length I had and the type of coax I had, 
it equals around 1 dB of feed line loss. Am I going to lose any sleep over 1 dB? No, and neither should you. So at 7 megahertz, 40 meters, uh, it's a pretty forgiving sort of setup. And again, worked really well. And the reason why we had a moderately high SWR is because when we sort of bend the half wave in that sort of shape that we did, we are electrically shortening the antenna. So as we can see from this SWR sort of graph curve, uh, we really had a good SWR, quite a bit out of band, higher up. But um, not a problem, as I say, uh, less than 3 to 1 SWR on 40 metres is absolutely nothing to worry about. Also, by bending it into that half square shape in the way that we did, that uh, centre part of the antenna, if you like, that 10 metre horizontal bit where the maximum current will come on 40 metres, because it's a half wave, was nice and straight. It was at a six metre height, which gives us that lovely sort of a local coverage that we're looking for in the daytime on 40 metres. OK, then, next, let's look at 20 metres. Uh, you also 10 DPR time. Uh, Great out. You, you are loud and clear. 59 in Azores, KSL. You are 5 and 9. You also 5, 8, 5, 9 here. Now, on 20 metres, this antenna is a full wave antenna. What it basically is, is two uh, quarter wave verticals spaced a half wavelength apart and fed in phase by the horizontal wire you saw going across the half wavelength of wire at the top. What this means is that we then have the current maximum right at the very top of each vertical. So the antenna becomes quite directional on 20 metres. If you think about the half square like this, OK, across and down, and you're looking straight ahead at it, then that's where the current maximum is going to be. That's when the but that's where the antenna is going to be quite strong. It's going to be about 3 or 4 dB stronger than a conventional sort of quarter wave vertical. All right. However, the trade-off is off the ends. So if you're looking at it, basically you've got the half square there, but off the ends of the half square, it'll be about 6 or 10 dB down on a vertical uh, quarter wave. So it's quite a difference. It becomes quite directional. So how you are where and how, I suppose, you put this antenna up, will uh, basically uh, make you stronger in some directions and weaker in others, okay? Now, in my case, looking at my antenna, and bearing in mind I just had the, the space I had to play with, um, it was stronger in the green direction, the two green arrows. So off the ends were the red arrows. So the green arrows, look at the, the, top, of those, uh, the top of those two green arrows, pointing towards sort of 50, 60 degrees, that was pretty uh, decent in terms of uh, going towards uh, Central Europe, OK? I would also have been quite strong, had there been any propagation, towards the uh, Central and South America as well. Notice, though, towards North America, down to sort of Africa, wouldn't have been as strong. So modelling confirms this, and uh, we can see here that we've got uh, two azimuth patterns for 20 metres. On the left, we've got the... Uh, we're looking straight ahead at the very top, and of course, the bottom will be quite just as strong as well. That's looking straight through the actual antenna. And we've got a figure of minus 2.3 dBi at 5 degrees. The right-hand one is the same pattern, but you notice that we're pointing towards one of the, the sides there. And we're at minus 12.1. So that's the difference. SWR for 20 also looked pretty good as well. Uh, much more forgiving than it was on 40 metres. So that's pretty good. Next, let's look at 15 metres. Tango Michael, portable 5 and 9. Uh, 75 Tango Mexico. Wow, Tim. Uh, good morning to you. Oh, nice to see you. Nice to see you. You're coming uh, 5 by 8. 58 here. My name is Mohammed. How are you, Tim? Yeah, Sal. Are you on the portable or on, a, uh, uh, on the uh, PlayStation? Or? I'm portable 100 watts into an NFED half wave, Mohammed. Over. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. <laughs> That's a Roger, yes, with the uh, 7300 from ICOM and uh, 100 watts into the uh, NFED half wave, which is uh, in a, a shape like a uh, half square shape. Over. Yes, uh, wow, it's amazing. So that was 15 metres, a very quiet band, but good to work a, a couple of bits of DX anyway down to East Malaysia, but 7,000 miles, so I can't be sniffed at, can it? 
Thank you to Mohammed and Robin. Now, um, the SWR was very good, which is uh, very useful again. However, what was noticeable is how the pattern is slightly different on 15 metres. What we have there, we've basically got uh, four main lobes. And at Malaysia, is actually towards the uh, the, the right-hand side, the, the three o'clock side, if you like, of that particular pattern. I'm very happy with that indeed. Okay, next, let's look at 10 metres. Uh, Germany 5. Germany 5, Tango, Mike. Germany 5, Tango, Mike. Uh, good evening, my name is Marcos. Your signal is 5 by 4 near Sao Paulo. Back to you. Okay, 10 metres, very quiet band. Worked under Brazil, which is quite nice, so can't be sniffed at, can it? Now, looking at the uh, the Aismuth pattern on uh, 10 metres, we can see it's uh, fairly omnidirectional in a sense. There's no real sort of huge nulls there. A couple of strong lobes. Um, we worked Brazil. Uh, whereabouts we were on that particular pattern towards Brazil was on the bottom left. So not the strongest part of it, but certainly good enough for us to work and into there. Uh, the SWR was uh, a little bit on the high side, just over about 2 to 1. Um, but I just used the tuner and the sent 300. And again, even with um, on 10 meters, uh, I think the, the, the loss on 10 meters would say, assuming a three to one um, sort of SWR at the feed point was about 1.2 dB. So I'm not going to worry about that. And uh, yeah, there we go. The antenna worked really well on that band too. So overall, what do I think about the NFED half wave as a half square? It ticks all the boxes I thought it would. And good old modelling has basically pretty much reaffirmed what I thought would happen with the antenna. On 40 metres, it's a bit of a killer on uh, for, for, for local contacts, you know, around, around sort of Europe and, and the UK. Uh, very happy with that indeed. Uh, it basically acts as a low dipole. It's about a dB down on a, on a sort of inverted V or a flat top dipole at a similar sort of height. So to be perfectly honest with you, absolutely brilliant 20 meters needed a bit more propagation on 20 really to give it a full workout but promising uh, again it's sort of stronger in the directions i thought it would be so on 20 it's the one band you've got to be careful about how you orient orientate the actual antenna 15 very pleased with those contacts under east malaysia very happy with that indeed and 10 meters wasn't really open and uh, there was basically two signals on my scope and I worked one of them down to Brazil. So oh, there we are. It works OK. What an antenna like this will depend on, of course, is how efficient your transformer design is. Uh, check out Colin's channel, MM0OPX, who has done a lot of work on NFED half-wave transformers and their efficiency. I'll put a link to the video he's done on that, a couple of videos he's done on that actually, in the description below, so check those out, okay? Okay, I hope you've enjoyed the video then. Thanks for watching, and there'll be more coming up soon. Bye for now and take care. All the best.